Now it's time for today's perspective on the programme and we're going to talk on the programme today about a disease which is responsible for 450,000 deaths worldwide each year. Now it actually affects 216 million people a year, most of them in Africa, and means that a child dies of malaria every two minutes. Malaria remains therefore a real killer and a major problem for health experts, particularly of course on how to tackle it. Well, now though, well a new idea is gaining traction with the start of first initial tests. As a start, 10,000 mosquitoes, which have been genetically modified in the UK in fact, are being released in three villages in Burkina Faso. They aim to target the fertility of the insect to try to stamp them out. That project is being run by Target Malaria, partly funded by the Bill and Melina, uh, Melinda Gates Foundation and with me uh, from them is Delphine Tizzi from Target Malaria. Thanks very much for being with us on the programme. Just explain to us first of all how on earth this works, genetically modifying a mosquito, how does that actually tackle the problem? Good morning, thanks for having me. Um, so malaria as you said is, is a really important disease these days and there's a lot of issues around insecticide resistance with the current tools. So where um, modifying mosquitoes comes in is that it provides a complementary tool to what we already have. And the objective, as you, as you stated, is to lower the number of the mosquitoes that act as a transmitter for the disease. So effectively, by releasing them, you're, you're actually in, uh, trying to, to ensure that the females are, are perhaps mating with a, a mosquito that, that, that can't mate back, if you like. Is that right? Yeah, so the ultimate goal is to develop a mosquito that when it reproduces with the white type females will bring the numbers down and we'll try to do that in two ways, either to make the progeny mainly males because only female mosquito bites or as you, as you said to uh, affect the, pro the fertility of the females. Um, but this is the long term goals. Currently we are in intermediary steps that are helping us to learn more about how these mosquitoes behave. And why are these steps necessary, do you think? So um, it's very important because uh, one of the technology that we're using or we're planning to use in the future uh, to reduce the population is called gene drive. And gene drive is a, is a naturally occurring mechanism by which um, genes have the possibility to be passed at a really high frequency in their progeny. And this is, um, while it exists in nature, it's, it's still something that researchers are learning about how to control it, how to develop it in a safe way in the labs. So before these can be evaluated in the field, we need to have gathered as much information as we can about how modified mosquitoes would behave in the, in the field with mosquitoes that don't have these characteristics. So it's very important for learning, for the science, but it's also very important to create a, a possibility to engage with the communities and, and with the authorities of the, of the countries. Now, of course, mention um, genetically modifying something and immediately a lot of people get very nervous, don't they? I mean, how can you ensure that something like this is, is properly measured, properly controlled, that, that it's safe, particularly in the long term? Yeah, I mean, and this is exactly uh, why this is taking so long. So this project started about 13 years ago uh, with lab research and we're progressing really slowly and, and with steps to make sure that at each step we can learn, uh, we can hear the concerns, we can do the appropriate risk assessment and we can take our time to make sure that when things will be released, they are uh, going to have more benefits in terms of malaria reduction than any potential risk. So it's, it's assessing this risk carefully, making sure all mitigations are in place and making sure that the population is part of this discussion and that it's an iterative process. So you mentioned that, I mean, you're almost admitting there that there is a potential risk. I mean, uh, what about the local population? I know there's been some opposition from them. So um, as for anything, you need to assess whether there's potential risk and that's how the regulations are built. Uh, it's the case in, in, the, in the partner countries in Africa, and it would be the same case if someone was doing this in Europe. There are regulatory frameworks that require you to uh, assess this risk as well as the benefits. In terms of the local population, uh, in the villages where we work, for example, in Burkina Faso, 
Uh, we've been engaging them and working with the population for about six years now about what are what is malaria, what are what's the role of mosquitoes, what are genetically modified mosquitoes. So building this knowledge and this dialogue. And so far we've had a really good understanding and a, a great trust relationship locally. Of course, that doesn't say there's no uh, groups that are opposing, but overall, uh, the majority of people in the country are, are supporting this. And why have you picked Burkina Faso? I mean, how bad has the problem with malaria been there? And why do you think it's worth that, uh, that risk, however minor it might be? So we work in, in Burkina, Mali and Uganda, and these three countries are amongst, are sadly amongst uh, the top 10 countries uh, in terms of malaria infection and death. One of the reasons is, is they have very good vectors. The mosquitoes that are present in this country are incredibly good at transmitting the disease. And one of the reasons for that is, is both their density, but also the fact they, are, they have adapted very well to their environment and to the insecticides that's currently the main, um, the main tool we are using. Um, the other factor that uh, made us choose these countries is the fact that there are amazing scientists uh, from these countries that are our partners on the project and that are effectively leading the project in the country. And you mentioned three countries there, presumably a lot of other countries and, and organisations right around the world really watching this, this project to see whether it can work. Yes, so there's a lot of dialogue happening, especially at the level of the continent, uh, for other countries to understand what this technology is, how they can have a regional dialogue to, to, um, to make decisions. Um, how, uh, because of course, uh, most of uh, Southern Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa rather, is, is affected by malaria. So it's not for a single country only, but it potentially could be a, a continent-wide intervention. And other parts of the world are looking at this um, because it could be one of the first application of this technology gene drive. And so people are looking to make sure that this is done carefully, that uh, we're learning from this because there, there are other applications for other disease and, and for other um, uh, human problems. Stephanie Tizzi, thanks very much for being with us on the programme. Uh, joining us there from uh, uh, Target Malaria. Thanks very much. That was